Hi, I'm Dempsey Pillai, and this week I'm reviewing... Slacks. Now before we start off, as always, I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button if you liked today's video, and if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. But, without further ado, let's jump into today's film. Slacks was directed by Elza Kephart and revolves around a group of retail workers at an upscale clothing store who, after going into lockdown the night before the release of a new collection, must face off against a pair of killer pants. As if there wasn't enough pressure from corporate already, am I right? Now, this film I don't think was on too many people's radar. It actually came out this past weekend on Shudder exclusively, but I mean, forget about the fact that you needed to have Shudder to access this film. It also came out alongside Zack Snyder's Justice League and The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So yeah, I don't think too many people saw this film, but despite how ridiculous it sounds and despite how hard it may have been to access, I'm here to tell you that it was actually a pretty good time. For starters, the premise is great. I always love secluded horror films where people are trapped and have until sunrise to survive. And while there isn't realistically a lot for her characters to do, I like that they're always kept active. They're always going somewhere or doing something. And still, the film doesn't waste any time. That being said, it clocks in at just under 80 minutes. And even though it's a bit on the short side, it doesn't feel like a short film. It still feels like we get to see the entire story play out and that the entire story breathes. We don't feel like we're missing anything or that anything was cut. And uh, I don't know, I, I liked the flow of it. It still felt very effective. One of my absolute favorite parts about the film is the special effects. There's a really nice balance here between practical effects and CGI, which you don't really see too often, especially in indie horror. While the pants coming to life and moving around do look a bit wonky at times, admittedly. I'm not really going to hold that against the film. Uh, not only because we see how it's done in a post credit scene, which I thought was really cool, but because half of the fun of the film is seeing the pants in action. Um, not knowing where they're going to strike next, because, you know, unlike, you know, traditional horror slasher films, our antagonist doesn't have a face. The, the pair of pants doesn't have arms. We don't really know what its motive is for a vast majority of the film. So we don't know where it'll pop up next. And it's especially good at hiding because it blends in with like some of the other clothes in this store. Uh, so as a result, a lot of the kills are really creative. And what, what, what I really loved and what I found to be most creative about this film is just how well it implements the space within the clothing store, but more so the fixtures that we're so familiar with uh, hooks, um, stalls, that's all I'm going to say, but uh, it really does have fun uh, taking all these things that we consider to be normal or that we're used to and turning them into weapons. Now, one of the things I didn't like about this film, believe it or not, was the acting. Most of the characters in this are just terrible people. And I do get that a vast majority of this film is a commentary on toxic workplace culture, and it is pretty satisfying to see some of those same people get killed off eventually. But not once did I ever feel compelled to really care for somebody to make it to the very end. Especially our final girl, which, when you think about it, is kind of bizarre. More than anything, though, I think what bothered me the most was the reason, or at least the explanation that's given to us, as to why the pants kill in the first place. If I'm being honest, it was a bit of a stretch. What makes it even harder to believe is the fact that the film kind of walks back from that explanation and makes you question whether or not it's the truth altogether. Basically, it tells you one thing, but shows you another. Overall though, despite its flaws, Slacks is a thrifty little horror film that I think will stick to most who watch it. At least until something more stylish comes along. And for that, I'm going to give this film three stars. Small price to pay for an awesome ass. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to view this video. It really does mean the world to me. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well for more new movie-related content weekly. Now, if you happen to see this movie, if you loved it, if you hated it, let me know what you thought about it down below in the comment section. I look forward to reading and responding to all of your comments, as always. But that is pretty much all the time that I have for you guys today. Uh, I do have some more stuff currently in the works, so be on the lookout for more new content shortly. In the meantime, though... I should probably get back to work. So, until next time, I'm Dempsey Pilot. Take care.